Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the highlights in the market for Thursday, September 29th, and then we'll go over the points for Friday, September 30th. And it does look like Thursday was a dead cat bounce, or at least Wednesday was a dead cat bounce. What we gained on Wednesday, we gave back and then some on Thursday. So things are looking more negative again. I go into more detail in the full length video, but we're still potentially building a base right now. We haven't really fallen down too much. We did set a new 52 week low, at least intraday and on a closing basis. But at the same time, we have to say, is this building a base before we get set to go higher? Or are we just establishing a plateau, a little resting spot before we get set to go lower? There's a lot going on in the world right now. And there are some pretty negative things that are really hitting the markets. But at the same time, we're seeing little hints of positive things happening. And we're coming back into a more uh, seasonally friendly time of year now. Now, even though we've had a lot of stock market crashes in October, October has also shown some pretty significant gains. So we'll just have to see how things play out. Let's go back and just talk about the highlights. Right at the open, we gapped lower. We just shot right through our, excuse me, S1 at 3661. We went down to the previous support level around 3625-ish or so, kind of that area. Eventually, we would end up even dropping down a little bit below that to set a new low. But we haven't completely fallen apart yet. Prices then attempted to recover, but then they failed at almost S1. Didn't quite get back up to that level. As the day went on, we fell down even to below the support that we had already been establishing. So it's a little bit lower. That's negative in and of itself. We're making, at least in the short term, we're making a series of lower lows intraday. And that's usually not a very good thing. But we're not falling apart completely, which could be a positive thing. Going into the close, we did see this pattern. We saw this start up a week or so ago where early strength, excuse me, early weakness and then late day strength. We saw some of that come back into the market in Thursday's session. And that helped get us up off of the lows. However, we still closed down 2.11% on above average volume. So the technicals are negative, but we're back down to this oversold condition, especially on a short-term basis. Doesn't mean we have to stop here. We can stay oversold for quite some time, but we're also building support. We have sentiment still getting over into the fear category. We're kind of seeing a convergence of things coming together that quite often produces a market bottom. But we said that a couple of days ago, and then we had one good update only to come <clears throat> right back down. So we just want to see a lot of confirmation if things are going to bounce. But there's, it depends on how you look at it. You can say half full, half empty. There are some positive things to look at in the market. And there are, of course, some pretty strong negative things as well. Inflation and interest rates still are the big concern, both in the U.S. and across the globe. We have a lot of geopolitical concerns. Apparently, there's more rumblings going on in Russia that I'll talk about here in just a moment. There's a lot of problems going on in Britain right now with their interest rates and with their currency, and that's creating a real instability that's feeding over into the EU as well as into the US. And then we had a little bit of Fed speak that came out. So what are some comments? We can call Wednesday a DCB or dead cat bounce. You can even get a dead cat to bounce if you throw it down hard enough. And that's pretty much what it looks like happened, at least to right now. Doesn't mean that all is over. It just means that the gains that we saw in on Wednesday, they were given back on Thursday and has not helped our technical picture to improve all that much. We had... Cleveland Fed President Mester, who is a voting member, come out and say that the Fed is not yet in restrictive territory concerning policy rates. Well, we kind of already knew that. And that's pretty much what we've been hearing all along. 
So that really didn't have a big influence on the markets. They were going to go down anyway. It's just a continuation of this more hawkish stance that the Fed's been making. There's a lot of instability right now in the UK concerning their gilts, which are their bonds, as well as the British pound. That's been It's been recovering now, but it was really tanking a couple of days ago. Then Putin is expected to announce the annexation of four Ukrainian territories on Friday. We'll have to see. Is that going to produce some kind of reaction? We saw a similar thing happen before World War II when Hitler went into Czechoslovakia, then Austria, then he finally went into Poland and was taking over, you know, annexing a lot of different land. Other countries just sat back and really didn't do much. Is that what's going to happen now? What's the U.S. going to do in response to this? What's the EU going to do? What's NATO going to do in response to this? We don't know at this point. Is this going to escalate things or calm things down if Putin makes this announcement? All of the sectors in the market declined in Thursday's session. We still have the 30 to the 5, the 10 to the 2, the 10 to the 5. Those yield curves are inverted. Sentiment is tipping over more towards the extreme fear side right now. We did have jobless claims, and this is what folks are using to justify saying maybe we're not in a recession. They expected 213,000 people to file for unemployment. They had 193,000. Now, that's still a big number, but a lot less than what was expected. We also had another release of the third estimate for GDP. Not a big market mover because we've seen two reports already. The first one that comes out, that's the biggie, and that's what folks tend to really latch on to. The second and the third and then the final, they don't get as much attention because we already know what's happening. And barring any real change in that or modification to it, it really doesn't drive the market all that much. Our trend is negative with the ADX on top or the, the red lines on top of the ADX and we're above 20. Our bias is negative now with the down day and our momentum, even with the solid up day, most of the previous days have been negative. So we're going with momentum as being negative. So what's our outlook? We're negative as we have been for quite a while now. And we're back at least on a short-term basis to being more oversold. It's the last trading day, not only of the week, but of the month and of the quarter. So there could be some real jockeying around. We might see a real increase in volume as a lot of different players try to shore up some things. There could be some price swings that could really take the market one way or the other, just because we're seeing everything happening on the same day. We do have personal income and spending coming out. That's a biggie. But the really big one is going to be PCE prices and core prices. This is the other major inflation gauge that the Fed likes to use and that will give us some insight as to what is happening with inflation. If it's lower than expected, that might provide some support to the markets. If it's greater than expected, this base that we've been building might turn into a plateau and we could fall down even more. We also have the Chicago PMI coming out and we have the final reading of consumer sentiment. And then the whole list of geopolitical events, the whole pipeline issue, which is kind of a mystery right now, different supply chain issues and lockdown concerns in China, inflation and interest rates are still the biggest focus for the US stock market. Any more Fed speak that we might get? So there's just a lot of negative things right now. So our scenarios, it's kind of hard to go with the down scenario because we're oversold. And there is a potential that we're building a base. We're seeing some, again, late day buying coming into the market. We're seeing a little bit of improvement with some of our positive setups. We can't really just dismiss that. So it's kind of hard to go with the down scenario and that we're oversold as well. We can't really go with the up scenario because of all these headwinds, of all these negative things that are happening in the markets right now. And we can't really go with the sideways look at things because the ADX is above 20 and negative. So our conclusion then is we are negative overall. In the short term, we're back to being oversold. Intermediate term is still considered kind of oversold and even some oversold conditions in the long term. So thank you very much. Please feel free to check out the full length video. 
I will prepare the daily video and daily brief over the weekend, as well as the weekly video and the intermarket analysis video.